Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome to another Lego Star Wars review. So today we're going to be looking at set number 9499 Gungan Sub. This set includes 465 pieces and originally retailed for $69.99 back in July of 2012. Obviously I got this set back in the day when it released and I finally got around to reviewing it. So taking a look at the box art right here we get the summer 2012 box art with your Darth Maul in the corner which works actually pretty well for nowadays. We also do get the Lego Star Wars logo regular stuff off the side and then you do get your minifigure selection down here showing all of your characters who are exclusive. In addition we of course do get the main picture of the model with your characters within it and then this very nice underwater background since this is an underwater vehicle. Flipping the box around we do get the Lego Star Wars logo on the back as well as some other features and looks at this particular vehicle right here. Moving to the very top of the box right here we can take a look we get some more logos and then your character selection the actual size of all of them which is pretty nice to see. Sides of the box feature some more logos some stuff in various different languages and some smaller pictures leading all the way to the very bottom with another small picture, some more Legos, and then the Lego trademarks and the barcode for this particular set. I did have to tape this box together because this is a very nice, interestingly sized box. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for that. So let's take a look at our instructions, minifigures, and final overall model. Taking a look at the instructions, we pretty much mimic the front of the box. We get two instruction manuals, that being book one and book two right here. Taking a look at the first book, we can take a look at the back. We get the Win Kid. And then we flip to a transition to the second instructions. The second instructions also mimics the front of the box, some very bag features, some information about the comic builder. I actually remember this on LegoStarWars.com, so that's very nice to see. We can flip right open. We have a quick Lego Club advertisement. We have a quick tidbit. I believe that this was part of like when they were doing some sort of TV series, just advertising all these sets and stuff. So yeah, that's for that. And then we can move forward to a quick minifigure selection right here for all of the sets, including the retail exclusives. So that's pretty nice to see. And then we have all of the sets within this summer 2012 wave right here, which I do have a review currently up for Jabba's Palace. And I will be reviewing some of these other sets in the future. That probably being these three at the top. These I never got to getting. I do wish to get the Malevolent someday within my collection. That's a vehicle that is from the Clone Wars that I don't have, which is surprising. And I hope to get it eventually someday. Moving forward, we do get some other information about this particular set. Leading to the piece count for one page. And then we get another additional page on the back of that leading to the final overall model for this particular set. So yeah, that's all for the instructions. So let's take a look at our minifigures. Taking a look at our first minifigure, we get Qui-Gon Jinn. This minifigure is exclusive to the set. We get some plain brown legs. We also do get the tan torso with the printing for the overall styling of the front of his outfit with his belt and everything. We also do get some tan arms and some light flesh hands for the flesh tone. He also comes with one accessory being a green lightsaber, so that's also pretty nice to get. We also do get the brown cape right here for another under the neck accessory. You can take off his hairpiece and take a look at the back printing on his minifigure as well. He does come with a double sided facial expression. We get the first facial expression with a very nice happy just calm facial expression. And then on the very back the one facial expression that makes this character exclusive in fact is this one that also has like this water breathing device on his mouth right there which is pretty accurate to the film so that's very nice. We also do get the same sort of situation going on when it comes to Obi-Wan that I'll be showing in a few seconds but overall just a very nice minifigure also has the same hairpiece as all the other Qui-Gon Jinns from this particular time period same mold just inside the regular brown color. So yeah that's all for our minifigure of Qui-Gon Jinn. For our next minifigure we have Obi-Wan Kenobi. This minifigure is also exclusive with some tan legs, tan arms, light flesh hands. We also do get the main pr printing for the very front of his outfit with his belt and his Jedi braid going on. We do get the blue lightsaber for his accessory right there. Pretty nice to get that with the silver hilt and all that. We also do get the under the neck accessory of the brown cape which is the same as the one that you get for your Qui-Gon Jinn minifigure. You can also take a look at the back printing right there just continuing the back of the belt and all of that. We also do get a double-sided facial expression, one with the regular face, just a calm, regular 
facial expression for his character and then we move on to having that breathing device on his face he also has the regular haircut style going on right there the normal minifigure hair piece just inside that orangish brown color so that's pretty nice to see as well so yeah that's all for our minifigure of obi-wan kenobi taking a look at our next minifigure we have jar jar binks this minifigure is not exclusive but also comes within the 2011 the battle of naboo set and the 2015 aat which is coincidentally getting a re-release i hope to also review that version sometime in the future we do get the plain dark gray legs and then we also do get the dark tan torso piece with the main printing for the front of his overall outfit i really like how they made this jar jar minifigure i think that he is due to an upgrade eventually since we haven't actually seen him I believe since 2015 so that's just another thing I thought I'd mention. We do get a darker skin tone for the arms and hands right there which I think is also very interesting considering previous versions like the main version that came out back in 1999 just had the same plain flesh tone for the entire character right there. We also do get one accessory being one of these scuba guns right here which you normally saw when it came to like Aqua Raiders or something like that or Atlantis. And then we do get the mainly custom molded headpiece for Jar Jar which I think is very nice including some printing this time around which looks very nice even on the very back of the ears and everything. I really like how they did Jar Jar's minifigure and I'm really excited to see if they do eventually make a new version of him for the future of LEGO Star Wars. So yeah, that's pretty much all for our minifigure of Jar Jar Binks. And then probably one of the more sought after figures within the set is Queen Amidala. This minifigure is also exclusive to the set with this very nice leg extension piece which is exclusive to her character right there just showing off her overall dress. I really like how that turned out. You can take a look at that from the very bottom. You can see that we get a normal sort of anti-stud look at the very bottom of her dress. She does clip to regular studs which is very nice. You can take a look at all the different types of like details and stuff. All like the little bits of printing even like from the very top leading up to the front of her torso piece right there. We do get the red styling for her torso and her arms and some light flesh hands for her minifigure. We also do get her white face right there which is supposed to represent the makeup that she puts on her face. You can also take off that hair piece just to take a look at that overall. You can even put a hood over that if you just want to disguise her or something like that. That's even better. You can take a look at the back printing as well. Really love how they go all out with this particular minifigure. And then you can take a look at this custom molded headdress piece right here, which is also very amazing. And this is the only time that we ever got this particular version of her character. And I really hope that she does come within another set sometime in the future. You can just take a look at all the different printing and dual molding on that. I just think that LEGO did a wonderful job when it came to styling this particular character. And it's definitely something that Star Wars collectors will really enjoy within their collection. So yeah, that's pretty much all for Queen Amidala. Taking a look at the final overall model for the Gungan sub, this vehicle has been represented before back in the day in LEGO form. This is the second time that we ever got it. It probably is due for a remake sometime in the future, probably with a sort of similar minifigure selection as well. But overall, I think that this is a very nice take on the vehicle and I do also really love all the building techniques and everything just to make this this rounded look right here for the very front. The overall color scheme is common for the vehicle right here using a lot of the light and dark grays and also a little bit of that blue right there which makes this vehicle pop very well. Even get a little bit of oranges, some translucent oranges and also some translucent yellowish greens towards the back and everything. Just some little details here and there which I think is very nice for the overall final model. One piece that I think is very interesting on the very front of this is this anchor piece right here inside this blue color. That's probably something that we haven't seen before inside that particular color, so that's pretty cool to see from the very front just to give that front piece of the ship. We do get some stickers all over this model, like even in the main cockpit area, you can lift these up using the clip pieces. All three of these can open up using the clip pieces, just showing that right away and I do really like the cockpit pieces for this particular vehicle. Looking inside we do get some stickers right here on these 2x6 brick pieces right here inside this blue color on the side right here just to show some extra little details. We get it on both sides of this interior cockpit front area. We also do get some more stickers when it comes to being inside the main cockpit on these 1x2 cheese slope pieces. You can just zoom in to take a better look at that. Same piece, just being represented right there with the same sticker from each side. And then we do get some places to sit down your characters right there on those jumper plates, which I think is very nice. I'm just gonna plop this down. So then we can sit our Jedi minifigures. We're gonna remove their weapons 
so then we can put them within the vehicle. I might as well also add it is best to remove their capes when you place them within the vehicle. It does show that within the instructions just to make it a little bit easier on your life. You can place them right there on the edge of the jumper plates just so then they are evenly spaced within the vehicle and then even better you can put Jar Jar behind them because he's also accurate to the scene unlike Queen Amidala who doesn't really even show up within the scene but is a pretty nice throw in still the same just as an exclusive minifigure I wish that Lego would do that nowadays they don't really do that when they include minifigures within sets they really skimp out when it comes to nowadays but either way those are your three characters in the main cockpit you do get the two back areas if you do want to just place another character in there or if you want to place your accessories in there that's another very nice option when it comes to the other compartments this one you can open up we do get this little storage star going on right here don't really know why this is in here this uses a lot of those cone pieces within that orange color which is pretty nice color to get those cone pieces in we do get that also within the set just as some extra little building technique parts and all that but either way that's all for that you can also place a lightsaber if you want within that clip piece so might as well do that while we're at it we do clip it on via the blade instead of by the uh, by the handle right there which is a little annoying but it's just how it shows it within the instructions and then you can just close that right back up and you can even put one of the capes in there if you so desire because we also do get the same sort of technique when it comes to the other side over here, which there is nothing in here and there are no printed pieces or anything, but you can just store your extra capes, you can store Jar Jar's gun in here, and you can even clip in the other lightsaber within that clip piece right there just as another little storage device and then you can close that right up all those close up using the clip pieces like i showed in the very beginning i also do really like the building techniques from the very back of the ship right here i do really like how that turned out just adding that little bit of extra detail just to make this rounded out and more sleek from the very back like i said we also do get that translucent yellowish green going on from the side right here using the stud we do get that within the model as well if you just look very closely and then we do have this back part which i'll talk more about in a minute just seeing that we do get the same sort of building techniques from both sides right here and even just like the curves from the very front using that hinge piece right there just to make it look very nice i just really like how that all turned out in addition, we do get some other little secret compartments within this area right here. We get these little storage cubes. We're just going to put the ship down and we get one on each side. If you open these up, what do we get? We get this translucent cylinder piece inside this translucent blue color. What is this any relevant to? I have no idea why this is included. This is just, you know, it does add that little bit of extra detail, that little bit of popping up area within this particular vehicle but I don't know why that's included we get it on the other side as well you can just lift that up using the stud which is pretty easy and very nice you can take a look inside the hole can't really see anything in there it's a little too dark but either way that's one of the big main things that is included when it comes to this set also when it comes to underneath the vehicle we do get these flick fire missiles right here which you know how those work all you got to do is flick those out and they go out into the distance never to be found again and hopefully i'll be able to reach that in the next couple minutes and then you can just reload that from the very bottom i really don't like these you know but they go a little too far sometimes and then you place that right back in there and then we do get the same sort of feature from the other side right there which is th which i think is very nice zooming out a little bit we might as well take a look at the bottom and while i do flip this over you should keep in mind that these will fall out if you do flip it over because they aren't interlocked in any studs might as well just place them over here but here's a look at the bottom of the ship just using a lot of the plate pieces and also the horseshoe pieces just to make this slide around a little bit better and then we do finally get to the very back of this vehicle which this does come out right here you can take a look at how that is clipped within here you can also see those cone pieces within that orange color yet again just hiding in the very back this does slide in and out using those groove pieces from the very side which i think is very nice and then it does clip in using the normal clip piece in addition to those hinge clip pieces towards the very back and that's how that interlocks to keep it staying where it is so putting this big part of the ship to the side for a minute we're going to take a look at this small little compartment area which this does lift up 
We do get some very nice stickers from the very front of this as well, which I think is very nice. These are peeling a little bit and aren't really placed as well as I would like them to, but I just left them there since they are peeling a little bit. But you can lift this up using the clip piece still the same. And then you do get a small little pod. If you do want to put like a character in here as like an escape pod or something, it's well worth your while. And then you do get another little control panel right here, another sticker on one of these 1x2 cheese slope pieces within that blue color. And then we do get the clip connection from the very front. You can close this up using the clip piece from the very back. And then we also do get this other rotating spinning piece right here. We do get one of these bigger wheel pieces within this blue color, which isn't really too common, so that's pretty nice to see as well. And also this top rock piece right here within this translucent orange color is also pretty cool to get. Don't know if that's too common either. And then of course we do get a lot of these long stick curve pieces right here towards the back within this blue color, which I really like how this like curves in order to make it have like that special like spiral going on right there and you can see how that's all connected from the very back using some more clip pieces just to give it that overall like angling and everything and just when you spin that around I think it looks very nice it looks better in person than it does on camera at least in my opinion but either way that's pretty much all for that some Technic connections to make that work out and then of course like I mentioned before you can clip this right back into the ship all you got to do is make sure that you have the grooves set in place and you clip that right back and then we do get those areas that fell out before that you can just toss right back into the ship so yeah that's pretty much all that I have to say for this vehicle looks like Jar Jar did get a little loose when it came to being juggled around within this particular ship Overall, for $60 back in the day, I think that this is a very nice deal. You do get a rather interesting minifigure selection, including some characters for the very first time, that being Queen Amidala right here, which this is a very nice minifigure and is probably one of the more detailed characters that I really think if you are a Star Wars collector, this is a minifigure that you will really need within your collection. Just a very nice spot on character that has a lot of details in it and some exclusive pieces and this is the only time that we ever got her minifigure. You do get exclusive versions of both Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn right there with their special breathing masks so if you do want to take them out of this situation you can have them just swimming around alongside the vehicle while Jar Jar pilots it solo so I guess that's just another thing that you can do. And then the overall design of this vehicle is obviously better than the original first one that they released and maybe might even get an update within the future who knows what's going to happen when it comes to 2021 or any time within the future. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for this particular video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this particular set. Also remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!